In this video, we review Azure Virtual Desktop Autoscale. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Heraldos. One of the first projects I did for the Azure Virtual Desktop community was a script that would start and stop session hosts based on the number of users. Over time in different versions of Azure Virtual Desktop, I created updates to add features and simplify the script. But there was always one problem with these scripts. They weren't part of the Azure Virtual Desktop portal. In this video, we'll review and configure the new Azure Virtual Desktop Autoscale feature now in public preview. Before that, please like, subscribe, share with a friend, and let me know what you think in the comments below. If you'd like to learn more about Azure Virtual Desktop, check out my course, Zero to Hero with Azure Virtual Desktop at udemy.com. And as always, the link is below. Most organizations don't have a consistent usage pattern 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Autoscale provides automation to shut down session hosts when the workload is low and bring them back online when usage increases. This can lead to a significant cost savings by deallocating session hosts when they're not in use. Autoscale uses a schedule based on the time of day, day of week, and number of active sessions. For an average workload, users start logging in at the beginning of the workday. This is the ramp up. We could have a lot of users logging in all at one time, so we need session hosts to be ready for that demand. Once all the users are logged in, we hit a state of sustained usage, or the peak hours. As we get close to the end of the day, the usage starts to decline and we hit a point of ramping down. Then we have off-peak, outside of normal business hours. We want to accommodate users during this time, but not to the extent we did with the ramp up and peak hours. The schedule defines how we want the host pool to behave, based on our use case. A scaling plan can have multiple schedules, but the days can't repeat in those schedules. A schedule for Monday through Friday and another for Saturday and Sunday would be fine, but we couldn't create one for Saturday, Sunday, and Monday if Monday's in another schedule. Within the schedule, we define the four steps. So for a Monday through Friday schedule, we start with a ramp up. We have to define a time, let's say users start around 8 a.m. We have to set a load balancing algorithm, Breadth first is recommended because of the high amount of logins during this time. This will distribute the logins to the greatest number of session hosts. We set the minimum percentage of hosts that should be available during this phase. If we set this to 20% and the host pool has 10 session hosts, two session hosts will always be available. We can't start a fraction of a server, at least not yet, so any fractions are rounded up. Next is the capacity threshold. This is the percentage of host pool capacity available that will trigger a session host to be started. To find this, the host pool needs a max session limit. That's required for this solution. If we had a max session limit of 10 and two session hosts are turned on, that's a total of 20 sessions. Now, if we set the capacity threshold to 50%, a new session host will start once the 11th user logs in because that will bring the spare capacity below 50%. Next is the peak hours. Here we set the start time and load balancing. We can't change the capacity threshold here. It uses the setting from ramp up. Next we set the ramp down. This is when users start to log out for the day and we can begin shutting down session hosts. We set the time and load balancing algorithm. Depth first is a good option to consolidate connections to a smaller number of session hosts. We set the minimum percentage of hosts. This works just like ramp up, but we may want to change the settings so less session hosts are left turned on. Let's set it to 10%. If there are 20 session hosts, that would leave at least one on all the time. We also set the capacity threshold. We can increase this number so it's not as aggressive on starting new hosts. If we set it to 90%, the existing session host will have to reach 90% utilization before a new session host will start. We also have the option to force user log offs. We can set a log off delay and a notification message, or we can not force log offs and set it to shut down the session host when they have no active or disconnected sessions. My recommendation is to leverage a group policy that disconnects idle session and logs out disconnected sessions. But if that's not available in Azure AD joined host pool, for example, this is an option. Finally, we have the off-peak setting. This sets the time of the off-peak window and the load balancing algorithm. The capacity threshold is carried over from the ramp down. Before we get to the demo, a couple things to know. First, you need to disable any autoscale solution you may have in place. You don't want those competing. Set a max session limit on the host pool. The default is 9,999 for breadth first. 
There are calculations based on the max session limit. Leaving it default will cause a problem. Those should be set anyway, so we know the users will have a great experience. Ephemeral disks are not supported, and right now this is a preview feature, so be warned. Let's jump into the Azure portal to get started. Let's start in the portal and create a custom role definition. This is what gives Autoscale rights to start and stop VMs and view and modify host pool settings. Go to Subscriptions and Access Control IAM. Go to Add, Add Custom Role. We could manually configure this role, including all 14 different actions that need to be configured, but let's do this the simple way. I have a template on my GitHub page. The link is in the comments. The file is avd autoscale role.json, and we're going to view this raw. Right click and save as. And we'll save it to the download directory. Let's go back to the custom role. Select the option to start from a JSON file, then browse and select the JSON file we just downloaded. You can update the name and the description if you'd like. Once done, go to Next. Here are all the permissions needed for this role. They were pre-populated with that JSON file, saving you from having to find each one and add it manually. Go to Next. Under Assignable Scopes, remove the type root. And we're going to add an assignable scope. Select Subscription from the dropdown. You could select individual resource groups if you want to be more restrictive. You would need to add the resource group for each host pool and the resource group for the VMs. For this example, we'll use the subscription. Select the subscription. And once you have that, click Select. Go to Review and Create. And if it all looks good, click Create. Uh, we've successfully created the custom role Desktop Virtualization Autoscale. Click OK. Next, we need to assign the role to the Azure Virtual Desktop application. Before we do that, let's see if we have two Windows Virtual Desktop applications. Go to Azure Active Directory and Enterprise Applications. Change the application type to All Applications and search for Windows Virtual Desktop. The names of these applications was established before the name change, so we're still seeing the legacy name Windows Virtual Desktop. Notice in my example there are two. We need to assign the role to one of these, but which one? Look at the application ID. The one that starts with 5A is the application ID for WVD Classic. That was the first version of Windows Virtual Desktop. The application ID that starts with 9C is for Spring Update, or the current version. That's the one we need. You may only have one Windows Virtual Desktop application, and that should start with 9C. That's fine. Use that. Next, make a note of the object ID for the Windows Virtual Desktop application with the application ID that starts with 9C. Again, the Spring Update application. This example, the object ID starts with 701. Yours will be different. We'll need this for the next step. Now let's go back to the Azure subscription we're working with and into Access Control. Go to Add Role Assignment. Search for the role we just added, Desktop Virtualization Autoscale. And it could take a couple minutes between creating this role and when it'll show up in the portal. Select that. Go Next to Members. Here's where we add the identity that the role will be applied to. Let's go to Select Members and search for Windows Virtual Desktop. And there's two of them, so let's select both. And go to Select. It shows the object ID, not the app ID, but we know the first digits of the Spring Update object ID. This example was 701. Let's delete the other. Give it a description if you'd like then Review and Assign. And here's our custom role that we added, Desktop Virtualization Autoscale. 
assigned at the scope of the subscription to the identity Windows Virtual Desktop. Go to Review and Assign, and the role's added. Now we can create the scaling plan. Go to Azure Virtual Desktop in the portal. Right now, well in preview, the only way to set this up is in the portal. We have scaling plans, open that. Let's create a scaling plan. Create a new resource group. Auto scale RG01 for this example. You can also select an existing resource group. Give it a name. Because the scaling plan is tied to a time zone, I'll call this Auto Scale Central US. The location will be Central US. Give it a friendly name and a description if you'd like. Make sure the time zone is set to the correct time zone. You can also add tags to exclude VMs from the scaling plan. For example, if a session host is in maintenance mode, you may want to prevent it from getting shut down. Let's move on to schedule. And here we'll add a schedule. It defaults to a weekday schedule. That will work for this example. Notice it repeats Monday through Friday. Click Next. Ramp up is the start of the day. This is where usage starts to increase. We'll leave the time set to 8 a.m. and leave the load balancing algorithm breadth first. We'll also leave the minimum percentage of host and capacity threshold as is. I covered that earlier in this video. Next, go to peak hours. At this point, most of the potential users should be logged in. You can set the load balancing algorithm. Leave it to depth first or breadth first. Whatever works best for your environment. Capacity threshold is carried over from ramp up. Next, go to ramp down. Ramp down is when users start to log out. Set the start time for ramp down. Here it's set for 6 p.m. For load balancing, the most economical option is depth first, as it consolidates connections to the smallest number of session hosts. Set the minimum percentage and capacity thresholds. So with this, a minimum percentage of host is 10%. So if there were 10 session hosts, one would stay on. And the capacity threshold is the amount of active sessions that need to be logged in before another session host is started. You can force users to log off and set the window for log off as well as a notification. I suggest not setting this up and using a GPO instead that disconnects idle sessions and logs out disconnected sessions. Forcing a log out is fine if the user stepped away without logging off, but if someone is working, it's kind of rude to log them out. The GPO will gracefully log out in active sessions. I'll have a link to information on that in the comments below. Okay, I'm done with the rant, let's move on. If we change this to no, we can select if we want to shut down when there are no active and disconnected sessions or just no active sessions. Let's go to next for off peak hours. We can set the time that off peak hour starts and the load balancing algorithm. Depth first is a good option here. Click add. We could create a new schedule for the weekend. Left as is, the weekend will be off peak and stay as depth first load balancing. We could add a host pool assignment from here, but let's go to review and create and do that in the portal. Click review and create and create to finish. Now that's finished, we can apply the scaling plan to a host pool. Let's go to Azure Virtual Desktop. And here are our scaling plans. And there's our scale plan. We can assign a host pool to the scale plan by going into the scaling plan and host pool assignments. We can add assignment, select our host pool, and assign. Or we can go directly to the host pool, go into the host pool, scaling plan, Notice we can't assign a second scaling plan to this host pool. A scaling plan can be applied to multiple host pools, but a host pool can only have one scaling plan. Also from here, we could disable the scaling plan or we can remove it by going to unassign. That's how to create a scaling plan and apply it to a host pool. I hope this helps you understand the new auto scale feature in Azure Virtual Desktop. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my courses on udemy.com.
Thanks for watching.